So moving on to our uh, third presenter today, and it is the last one we have, uh, that will be Blue Glass Limited, ASX ticker BLG. It has a market cap of approximately 80 million. And today from Blue Glass, we welcome James Walker, Executive Chair. Blue Glass delivers cutting edge custom laser and LED development across the industrial, defense, display and scientific markets. James, take it away. Great. Thanks, Manny. Um, appreciate being put the blue, gla blue glass presentation up on the screen. I, great. Uh, good one. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for making the time on a Friday afternoon. Really appreciate it. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So Blue Glass. Blue Glass is a laser dyed manufacturing company. We manufacture, develop and sell laser dyes to the market. Um, we've been in this business now developing laser dyes for the last three and a half years. And I'm very pleased to say that in January this year, we launched our first suite of products to the market where we launched um, six products in the 405, 420 and 450 nanometer range. Um, and as you can see by the slide here, when, I, when I'm talking about wavelengths, I'm really talking about colors. Um, and the colors have different applications and have different reactions to different materials. And hence, they all, all have a, a role to play in the industries that we're focused on. And as you can see there, we're focused on the industrial, defense, scientific, biotech, and the display markets, all important markets. Um, next slide, please. Um, laser dyes have a role to play in each of these markets that you see. Lasers are actually used in almost all advanced manufacturing processes in quantum computing and quantum sensing, automated reality, 3D printing, robotics, um, and defense applications. Lasers are a fundamental part of how we work today in the modern world in digitalization and electrification of things. Um, and lasers play a key role in that. Next slide, please. Lasers, not surprisingly, because of that, and because they're involved in almost every industry today, is a large, large market. Lasers are forecast to be a 25 US billion dollar market. And where we play, which is in GAN laser dyes, in that blue and green visible wavelengths that I talked about earlier, is a 2.5 billion dollar market forecast by 2025. It's the fastest growing sector in the laser dyed market because of the unique properties that GAN laser dyes actually have. Next slide, please. So as I said, Blue Glass now has products in market. We now have the manufacturing capability and we are focused on these five sectors. A lot of these names that you see are customers and potential customers that we're talking to. Uh, and in the laser space, in the industrial space, we're talking to a lot of the well-established laser companies already because they do not have the GAN capability. They cannot produce the blue and green GAN lasers that we can make today. Um, so hence we're having conversations with a lot of the of the logos you see on this page, and they all have a role to play in each of the sectors that we're focused on. Um, next slide, please. So, so why why has Blue Glass focused on GAN laser dyes? Many people on this call may already remember that Blue Glass has been a research company until about three and a half years ago, and we were applying our unique RPCVD technology um, to we were fundamentally using our RPCVD technology for a licensing model and a hardware model. And three and a half years ago, we decided we need to take out, change our strategy. We need to apply our unique technology into a market where we can make a product and actually have a significant influence on that market. And that led us to the decision to change the focus of the company to a product design, manufacturing and product selling business in the laser dyed space. And we did that for many reasons. One of the main reasons why we focused on moving to a laser dyed company is there are only a handful of GAN laser dyed manufacturers out there today, and we are one of those. So there are not many suppliers actually producing GAN laser dyes for the market today. And two of the largest are large LED companies. Um, so they're more focused on their LED business than their laser business. So when we did a review of the market, it became quite clear to us when talking to customers, they were looking for a third supplier who could provide multiple wavelengths and who could provide those, those products in different form packages, different form factors, different packaging, so they could use it in their own applications in a better way. Um, hence, that's why we decided as a company, it was the right time to apply our RPCVD technology and develop laser dyed products. Um, a lot of our competitors, as I said, are focused on LEDs. They're focused on high volume, low mix. 
Um, and that's the opposite of what we're doing. We're addressing the market need by providing multiple wavelengths in multiple form factors to actually address what the customers are looking for when they're looking to buy laser diodes. And the other thing really worth stressing is making GAN and GAN laser diodes is difficult. It is only because of Blue Glass's 15-year history of working in GAN for RPCVD that we were able to convert our technology and become a laser diode company in the first place. It is difficult to work in GAN, and hence we've got a natural advantage over many of the other competitors in this space. In addition to that, why we feel comfortable about focusing the laser diode market is we now have a manufacturing facility. So in May 2022, Blue Glass acquired a laser diode fab in, in Silicon Valley in California. We were very fortunate that we were able to acquire the equipment in that building, take over the lease of that building and hire the staff who'd been working in that building in that company for, in some cases, over 12 years. We were able to acquire the fab for 2.5 million US dollars. If we were to build our own fab today, that would be a $40 million investment. So we were very fortunate um, to acquire that fab and therefore be able to produce our own laser diodes in-house. Um, what I haven't got here is we've got a, a team that is now laser diet experience led team. We were very fortunate to hire Jim Haddon two years ago, um, who his entire working career has been in the laser diet space. Um, he was he came across and has joined us as CEO because his last two roles have actually been taking laser diet development and taking them to market. Um, and it was through Jim's not, contacts that we were able to find that fab in the first place. Um, next slide, please. So these are the markets that we are focused on in more detail here. So our current products that we have in market and the products that we're developing, and you can see that by the wavelengths across the top, is a 735 million US opportunity um, in the applications that I've already talked about, advanced manufacturing, robotics, uh, 3D printing, quantum computing, quantum sensing. Lasers are used in all those applications. So we are focus on these markets and getting our products to market, particularly with some of the customers you can see there on below. Um, next slide, please. So why GAN? Why does GAN laser diodes have an advantage over the traditional in, um, infrared lasers that are in the market today? And this slide really tells the story. GAN lasers, these um, have higher absorption in metals. Um, and this is particularly important if you look at copper. Copper is used in almost every application today. Um, electrification of cars, in your phone. Um, copper is a material, material that is used repeatedly. Um, and hence, if you can have a laser that is 13 times more efficient, you can, have, you can have a less powerful laser doing the same role, which leads to cleaner, cleaner welding, cleaner cuts, and more efficient processes. Um, and hence, that is why GAN is the fastest growing sector in the laser diode market today. It also has unique applications when it comes to viruses and bacteria um, and, and cancer cells, and hence why we're also focused on the biotech industry. Next slide, please. Um, here's, here's our roadmap. Um, yes, we've got six products in market today, which we launched in, in, June, in January 2023. At a major laser show in June this year, we announced massive improvements in the performance of those lasers and new lasers that are coming to market. Um, as always, we will continue to develop our technology to improve the lasers and to actually take us into new wavelengths and new form factors and new packaging. Um, we have a deep pipeline of product development. Next slide, please. And that's really validated by this slide. So anyone who's been following the company would have seen at the beginning of this month, we announced that Blue Glass had been, had been announced as a partner in one of the US Department of Defense ME Commons consortiums. So the US Department of Defense has a $2 billion allocation under the CHIPS Act over the next five years to develop products that it needs um, and hence, hence what they've done, the Department of Defense, is create these eight consortiums to help develop these products. We were named in one of those consortiums, um, and you can see the consortium here, it's called the Claws Consortium, and it's focused on electronics and photonics, um, with the view that the US Department of Defense wants to have companies in country that can take ideas from the lab and take them through to the fab and actually produce products. 
Um, so we were the only Australian company announced as part of these ME Commons programs. Um, our particular, our particular hub, um, our particular consortium was allocated in the first year thirty nine point four million US dollars. Um, the US Department of Defense has not allocated the allocations over the next four years. It's just announced the allocations for the first year. This is a great validation for blue glass technology um, and where we fit in the GAN laser dyed space. Um, we are the only GAN laser dyed manufacturing company in this consortium. So this, this is a this is a, an exciting, exciting announcement and exciting validation of the blue glass technology. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. So we're, we're already got, as I said, we've already got products in market. We've been selling products since January. We've got repeat customer orders. We've got people validating our products to use into their, their products. So we're starting to starting that commercialization journey. We're pretty excited about where we are. In addition to that, next slide, please. While we're building out our product revenue, you will see that we, as example in that ME Commons program I just announced to the Department of Defence, we are also working with partners to help develop our products, um, i.e. they're paying us to um, develop our products quicker so they can use it in their commercial applications. The ME Commons is a great example of that. Next slide, please. So, Blue Glass, in summary, we are a pure play laser dyed manufacturing product selling business. Um, we have facilities both here in Australia where we do the GAN epitaxy, the part that we have a long history in. And through, through bringing on a CEO who's a laser dyed expert two years ago, we now have facilities in the US which allow us to manufacture our own products and take them to market. We're operating in a space where there are few suppliers. As I said, we are one of only a handful of GAN laser dyed manufacturers in the world. We are the flexible supplier addressing the markets where the big guys are not playing and we think that's the right way to go. And we have unique applications in things like quantum sensing and quantum computing that will give us a, a commercial advantage over our competitors. Um, and with that, that's the end of the presentation. James, thank you for that. It's fascinating. Um, uh, we've got a couple of questions that have come in uh, whilst you were uh, presenting there. The, the, the first one is around... Uh, you've spoken about the the pipeline, uh, the orders coming in and the pipeline building. The question is around your manufacturing capacity and ability. Do you are you confident that you are in a position from a manufacturing perspective to deliver into the demand uh, at the rate of growth that we are seeing that demand grow? Yeah, so the short answer is, the short answer is yes. and what i what I didn't touch on was when we bought that facility in in California nearly two years ago, that had a significant impact on increasing our capacity. So we're not at full capacity yet, but when that facility is fully operational and at maximum capacity, we will be able to produce $170 million US per year of product to sell. Um, so when we're operating in a $735 million market, um, we think we've got a great capacity um, with the facility both in Australia and in Fremont in California um, to actually meet demand. Okay, great. Um, I'll uh, move on to the next question. It's a pretty specific one. It's um, uh, the question is Chief Scientist Kathy Foley said yesterday that Australia must pick quantum and comment, yeah. <laughs> um, as the nation's technology niche for the future. The question is how does Blue Glass play into this niche? Well, so the two two sectors she highlighted in the in that in that speech was quantum computing and photonics. Um, so photonics is lasers. Um, so I think we fit very nicely into that strategy, and I think it's a you know it's a smart place to play, right? So Australia is focused on building its own semiconductor industry, as lots of countries are now. Um, but Australia is allocating funds to building a semiconductor industry. We are a semiconductor company. We are just using our semiconductor reactors to build lasers as compared to chips. Um, and because of the things I've highlighted in the market, we can actually be quite a su substantial player in that laser dyed market. One, because we've got capacity. Two, because we've got a long history in GAN. Um, and it's in a very exciting area that touches across all technologies. So I think it's actually a, a pretty smart place to where we could focus as a country 
is the photonic space. Um, it's a it's a key industry going forward. And the ME Commons program, Department of Defense proves that as well. So you know, we're we're quite quite happy to be in the photonics industry. It's it's a great industry for what we have technology wise and how we can actually influence the world market. Okay. Great. Um, I'll move on to the next question. The this one is also pretty specific. It's uh in July 2023, Blue Glass said that China will impose new export restrictions from the 1st of August 2023. Blue Glass initial assessment was no short-term impact is expected. And the question is, has Blue Glass changed its view? Um, so sh- the short answer is no, we have not. So we continue to talk to our suppliers um, and our suppliers are all over the world and we're having no no feedback feedback that is causing us any concern. In, in fact, one of them is a US supplier who uh, has recycled gallium from the US. So we're actually not concerned about that. We have no, no feedback that makes us change that mind. And of course, we would have a market obligation if we felt that we had a different view on that, we would update the market accordingly. Right. Um, I'll move on to the next question. How much longer does it take for customers to evaluate GAN lasers and place real orders? Yeah, so so each of those industries will be different, uh, many. So and different, di- each of the different applications are different as well. So uh, if I think about our three types of customers, um, our first one is someone where they're replacing a laser in an existing product. So the welding unit that goes into your phone, for example, um, they're already massive industries where they've got lasers that they're already using. That process to validate us in that application will take some time. Of course, they have to be comfortable that you know our products will last long enough to actually replace the existing one. And more likely than not, we'll then go into the next version of the product. So I think that process will take some time. The next lot of customers that we're talking to and we're getting a lot of interest in is the companies that are developing their own, their own applications from scratch, particularly in quantum computing, right? So they're developing their quantum application and we're not replacing lasers in that application. We're actually being built into those applications from, from day one. So in that case, we're being validated quite quickly, but they're not selling a lot of units into the market yet. Um, and hence, we'll, you know, we'll keep getting orders as they increase, but you know, they're not going to be the massive orders straight away. Um, but we're already being built into those products. The third type of customer we talk to are the distributors. Um, and we've got good conversations going with the distributors where they will order significant amounts to sell to their customers who will both be developing products, universities and small companies, as well as the larger companies. So I think we will see some good orders coming from distributors um, once we've actually started signing them up fairly soon. Okay. Um, There's a couple more questions and they basically, they're they're, they're all around your order book, which in a sense you've you've really kind of covered. But, um, you know, there are some questions around, can you give us a little bit of colour you know, on order book, on pipeline, you know, and, you know, customer qualifications going on that are ongoing. Yep. Um, so if you can add a little bit to that, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, no, so happy to. So, um, so yeah, we've, so you know, our salespeople are based in the U S um, most of our customer inquiries are coming from the U S there is no laser diet industry really in Australia at the moment. So this is a, an overseas story an export story. Um, so our our team are talking to customers all the time. Um, they are now starting to order, and then we're now starting to get repeat orders. So we feel comfortable we're at the beginning of that journey. Um, but we're in addition to that, where shareholders can look to see significant revenue coming will be this these type of pr- um, partnership programs that we've we're talking about, where people are paying us to help develop products that they need quicker. The beauty of the partnership arrangements and the ME Commons one in particular is this is the roadmap that we have for our own products, where we want to take our technology, you know, over the next three, six months, two years, where we want to develop products, we're actually getting paid to develop that now through programs like the ME Commons. So customers can look for, shareholders can look forward to seeing customer revenue from actual product sales and also the revenue from these partnership agreements that we have. And, uh, and in Jim's experience as the CEO, he will tell me that, all the laser dyed companies he worked with, it was really those partnership income was driving it while the product sales were growing. And that's exactly the stage we're at. Okay. Thank you very much for that, James. Um, and thank you for your time today. Um, have a great weekend. We, we, we hope to see you back again soon. Yeah, great. And thank you for having me. And thanks everyone for hanging around. Bye.